This is a response to Wazulu's video, The Population Problem, Crevo Rant Number 71. Before the fun begins, I'd once again like to thank my good friend Falchion49 from Holy Hallucination 17 who also lent me his expertise here. He's a professional archaeologist who makes informative and entertaining videos in this area, so do be sure to check out his channel. So this is the first time I've addressed this particular hyper-delusional bag of gelatinous buttock blubber, but his infamy precedes him like the fetid stench billowing from a William Lane Craig video. As a result, I'm aware that in spite of his somewhat urinary-sounding YouTube handle, his real name is Ian Juby. However, having forced myself to watch this particular offering of rancid offal, I simply can't bring myself to refer to him as either Ian or Mr. Juby, and so instead will use the rather more appropriate moniker of Booby. Now I have to warn you all in advance that Booby was excreting brain stools at such an astonishing rate in this video that I'm afraid you'll have to endure more than the usual amount of vile video clips in this episode. So now that you've been given fair warning, grab hold of your bath bag, strap yourselves in and let's take a look at some of his astoundingly fatuous fat fuckery. <laughs> Apparently Jacques thought the world was overpopulated, to which I can only reply, he needs to get out of the house and travel the world some more. He's obviously never been to places like Ontario, or Manitoba, or Saskatchewan, or Alberta, or British Columbia, or Texas, North Dakota, Montana, Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, Arizona, Washington. In fact, apparently he hasn't visited much land at all, because we got plenty of land to go around for the population of Earth. You began your video, Booby, with a quote from Jacques Cousteau on global overpopulation, but I decided to omit it for the purposes of brevity as it wasn't particularly relevant and also to minimize my subscribers' exposure to your nauseatingly patronizing shit baggery. I only cut in here to point out that you appear to be unaware that overpopulation isn't simply defined in terms of land area but also by the available resources. In fact, you seem to have entirely ignored the ecological concept of carrying capacity, that is, the maximal number of individuals that can be sustained by a habitat in terms of not only area but food, water and shelter. As it happens, my daughter recently learned about this concept in school and she's only in fifth grade, so your omission does seem to give some indication of the actual extent of your education. And before I continue, I also wanted to point out that while you seem to have no problems in expecting deserts and wastelands to be capable of sustaining hordes of human beings, I strongly suspect you'd quickly change your tune after a couple of weeks in the Sonoran Desert living off skunk shit and cactus spines took its toll on that adobinine physique of yours. So the US national debt in printed one dollar bills stacked on top of one another would be 64 trillion 500 million inches high or 5 trillion 375 million feet or 1 million 17,992 miles or the distance to the moon and back twice over. I almost didn't include this clip because it turns out that it's completely irrelevant to the lies you're preparing to tell. In the end, I included it because it provides a fine demonstration of your typically slimy creationist snake oil tactics. You see, Booby, I strongly suspect that you included these pointless calculations solely for the purpose of impressing your brainwashed or brain-dead followers with your supposed mathematical acumen, thereby distracting them from the utter vapidity of your meritless arguments. However, to those of us who recognize real intelligence when we see it, all you've succeeded in doing is demonstrating your qualifications for working the cash register at McDonald's, assuming that you wouldn't be too busy stuffing your face with the merchandise. Now, if we took every single person on planet Earth and had them hold hands around the Earth, we'd have a big circle of people holding hands around the Earth. <laughs> I could have easily let this go, but I wanted to show my viewers that science isn't the only thing you fail miserably at. In reality, for the rest of us, this was nowhere near as funny as the rest of your video, but unfortunately for you, those are the parts where you appear to be taking yourself seriously. But, if we took every single one of those 7 billion people and gave them one square meter to stand in and put them all together, we would have a square filled with people roughly 84 kilometers in breadth and width. 
Not only is it incredibly dumb to suggest that Earth has an overpopulation problem, this is very telling about the age of the human population. Is it now, booby? Well, we'll go on to see what kind of plops of wisdom you're planning to excrete in a minute, but let me again take a moment to remind you about what my 10-year-old already knows. Available land area makes absolutely fuck all difference to population size if other resources are limiting you, ignorant tard. Of course, as we'll find out later, your sickly stunted mind is actually vaguely aware of this fact and you're either deliberately lying about it, actively ignoring it or dismissing it out of hand because it's somewhat inconvenient to the ludicrous excuse for an argument that you're in the process of squeezing out. You see, according to the scriptures, the human race suffered a mass extinction roughly 4,500 years ago, the time of Noah's Flood. You see, starting with a population of 8 people, we can accumulate 7 billion people in 4,500 years with a population growth of 0.46%. Great, booby. You're finally getting over your bout of mental constipation and are about to crimp off your thesis and show us the fruits of your somewhat adult thought processes. But before you do, I'd like to pause for a moment and interject a few thoughts of my own. Aside from the somewhat distasteful, nay disgusting notion that the entire human race is the result of a depraved incestuous gangbang conducted by the denizens of your ark while taking breaks from, shall we say, tending to the goat, sheep and other assorted ungulates that they took on board to keep them company on the long winter nights, I should also point out that your proposition that we're all descended from these eight ancient swingers is also not supported by the physical evidence. In fact, not only is it not supported by it, it's positively fucked up the arse, beaten senseless and pissed on by it. For example, Hawks and colleagues have concluded that the currently available genetic, anatomical and archaeological data preclude any possibility of a pre-Pleistocene human population bottleneck, much less one of only eight promiscuous camel fanciers less than 5,000 years ago. Of course, I'm sure that none of this matters to a delusional numbnut who's decided to place his stock in the ramblings of long-dead tribal shaman rather than to the proven track record of modern science. Additionally, it appears that the extent of your mastery of science and the scientific method is only just enough to allow you to take a dump on it every time you open your mouth. For example, it's quite telling that you don't seem to think that it's at all unacceptable to merely assume a constant population growth instead of actually taking the time to find some evidence to support it. Unfortunately for you, booby, the real world is a little more complex than a compound interest calculation in a child's arithmetic book, and we'll soon find out that this critical assumption of yours holds about as much water as a tray of hamburgers holds patties when you're in sniffing distance. Now, considering in 2009, the CIA World Factbook gave a general population growth of planet Earth as 1.092%, then our 0.46% growth rate is actually quite conservative. Okay, booby. I think it's incumbent on me to point out here that the number you quote is actually based on physical evidence compared to the one that you simply pulled out of your ass to fit your already pre-established conclusion. Thus the fact that you consider 0.46 to be conservative is neither here nor there because the fact remains that it's still dripping with the contents of your jumbo-sized rectal cavity. But wait! According to the evolutionary timeline on the ever-so-reliable Wikipedia, the human race has been around for at least 200,000 years. So if we use our very conservative growth rate of 0.46%, starting off with one couple 200,000 years ago, Earth's population should be upwards around 4.312 times 10 to the power of 398, or four followed by 398 zeros. Needless to say, the evidence supports an incredibly young population of Earth. My understanding, booby, is that you like to make a habit of trotting out your Mensa card to serve as a surrogate for any actual qualifications. If that's really the case, and assuming that you didn't knock it up using a piece of card and a box of Crayolas, then I can only say that this is a perfect example of how all the innate intelligence in the world is useless if you insist on sticking your head up your ass at even the mere sniff of a fact. I mention this because I had to cut out over a half a minute of footage from this clip of you harping on about your dollar bills and citing irrelevant numbers for no other reason than presumably to make yourself look smart. 
Unfortunately, the putative effect of this segment was completely ruined by the inundation of complete and unmitigated bullshit that you disgorged both before and after it. Firstly, coming from a man who seems to access all his information through his anal sphincter, I found it strangely comical and ironic to hear you disparaging Wikipedia whose accuracy could be likened to that of an atomic clock when compared to the information you're retrieving from your swollen brown eye. Secondly, you neglected to explain why this unfettered human population growth that you're describing when applied to the remaining members of the animal kingdom hasn't left us all wading knee-deep in aardvarks, earwigs, koalas and kestrels. Could it be that you didn't think of that booby? Or that you just don't think at all, dumb fuck? Thirdly, you now seem to be working under the assumption that your value of 0.46% somehow has its basis in reality rather than your digestive tract. As it stands, in the absence of you providing empirical evidence to support a constant human population growth rate of half a percent for the past 200,000 years, this calculation is useless for anything other than demonstrating how spectacularly dishonest or simply fucking stupid you are. Fourthly, just a cursory look at the US Census Bureau's database would have shown you that the global population growth rate in the past 60 years alone has varied between 1.1 and 2.2%. In addition, their recent data, which even delusional loons like you would have trouble denying, show that the global population in 1960 was 3 billion, meaning that your imaginary number of 0.46 overshoots the actual population by essentially a factor of 2, necessitating that you more than treble your number to 1.7 to get from 1960 to present day. None of this bodes well for your mind-numbingly simple assumption of a constant growth rate. Hey, eh, booby? As a result, I think it's safe to say that the only thing your pointless calculations support is that anyone can get from one number to another using an exponential expression if they're free to select the parameters at will because they're unconstrained by inconvenient concepts such as reality. In this case, of course, one of your numbers is actually grounded in the real world, but another is grounded only in the hallucinogenic fantasy that you've chosen as a worldview, and the last is still steaming from the place you fished it from. Now some evolutionary skeptics will object and point to bacteria which can overpopulate an area in the space of hours. But of course their population is limited due to food and space. And so the human population will also be limited by food and space. Aha, so there we go. It seems that you are aware of the concept of carrying capacity in your own woefully childlike way, booby. I suppose even a smug little shitbag like you didn't think he could get away without addressing this minor obstacle to perpetuating his delusion. So let's get on and watch the breathtaking way in which you deal with this little hiccup, shall we? Even with a population of 7 billion people, we still haven't even scratched the surface of the limitations of food and space on planet Earth. That's it. That's really it. I almost blew my fucking top when I saw you expelling this unbelievably vile and noxious turd for two reasons. Firstly, while I was waiting for you to back up your assertion that we've barely scratched the surface of the food supply on this planet, it rapidly became apparent that you had no intention of doing so. So that's it, booby. That's the sum total of your refutation. A bald-faced assertion without any corroborating evidence at all, in fact one flying in the face of mountains of evidence to the contrary. You see, booby, it seems to have escaped your notice that not only are we being urgently warned by experts of impending food and water shortages in the face of unchecked population growth, but according to the Food and Hunger Organization of the UN there are almost one billion hungry people in the world. These would be things that you might be aware of if you spent a little less time with your face lodged in a bucket of donuts and a little more time doing some research. But even that doesn't excuse you from what you just said because even an ignorant dipshit like you must be aware that images such as these are unfortunately all too common. And that's the second thing that pissed me off. Considering you look like you're seldom more than an arm's length away from a bacon double cheeseburger, you have some fucking nerve to talk about there being no global food supply problem. Really, booby? Really? What kind of selfish, egotistical, self-centered prick 
who by the looks of it gorges himself daily on triple Macau burger supersized meals topped with extra helpings of saturated fat, has the nerve to put out his shitty video smiling his smug I'm alright Jack smile and thinking that everyone in the world is as lucky as he is. Well I can answer that for you booby, the answer it seems is a fundamentalist creationist Christian. So while you might think that you're defending your religion I have some news for you. All you're doing is showing the world how worthless your particular version of God is at making you a better person and how effective it is at making you a worthless crusty skid mark on the gusset of humanity. You're no better than the countless other avaricious alleged Jesus loving God fearing motherfuckers whose only real concern is in trying to grab as much of the pie for themselves while simultaneously giving not one fuck for those who are unfortunate enough to have no pie at all. There is no reason at all to assume a smaller population growth rate in the past except for those who desperately want to save the deep time and millions of years that evolution needs. No, there's no need to assume any population growth rate in the past at all. You see, sane people who aren't living in fairy la-la land use something called physical evidence to determine the actual populations from the past and then determine how the growth rate varied over time. That may come as a bit of a shock to a cranial defective like you, booby, but that's what professional archaeologists do for a living. Prehistoric populations are estimated using numerous factors including tillage areas, the size and layout of settlements and residential spaces, crop yields, the distribution and type of food storage structures and lifespan estimates determined by paleopathologists. Now while all this might seem like voodoo to a simpleton like you, I can assure you that it's more than a considerable improvement on the booby method of colorectal data collection, where the investigator is free to make up anything he likes to suit the lie he happens to be telling at the time. And as for deep time and millions of years, did you really forget what you said a few minutes earlier in that segment I omitted? Nobody really knows how big the universe is, but present estimates are is that it's at least 156 billion light years wide. If it's that big booby, then how exactly can we see it, do you think? The explanation favored by those of us who aren't clinically insane, of course, is because it's billions of fucking years old. You see, booby, that's the kind of thing that happens when you try and construct an internally consistent model of reality based on the mythical fantasies of barbarians and on making shit up as you go along. It falls apart faster than a turkey carcass at your house on Thanksgiving. You can see this fudge factoring going on on the ever so reliable Wikipedia when you take a look at their page on human population growth. When you look at their charts, you can see that they only extrapolate human population growth back to about 10,000 years ago. It flatlines around 5,000 years ago. That's right, according to Wikipedia, human population growth was zero for about 195,000 years. What you neglected to notice, booby, was that the Wikipedia article sourced its data from the US Census Bureau. Now considering that you earlier referenced the CIA World Factbook, I think we should reasonably expect you to also accept data from other federal agencies. The problem here is that you are apparently too stupid to understand the concept of resolution and too indolent or dishonest to actually do some real research. As a result, why don't you sit back with a crate of potato chips while I do that part for you? You see, booby, it turns out that the Census Bureau frowns on your style of research and instead actually uses some academic sources to calculate population estimates from various periods of Earth's past. If I now plot the actual data from 10 to 5,000 years BP, guess what we find? It doesn't flatline at all, you asshole. This becomes particularly important when you go on with the following particularly noxious piece of cerebral flatulence. Oh, what the heck? Let's use their numbers. Let's assume an average population of 4 million people over 195,000 years. Okay, in the interest of time, I cut out the part where you use your assumption that the population didn't change from 10 to 5,000 years BP and applied it to your new and even more egregiously erroneous assumption that the population remained constant at 4 million in the previous 195,000 years and come to the conclusion that since we can't find the 26 billion bodies you calculate, humans can't have been around for a very long time. 
Well, Booby, since you've already shown that your calculation is based on bullshit, it shouldn't really come as much of a surprise that your conclusion is an even bigger pile of bullshit, should it? In addition, you seem to be operating under the impression that skeletal remains are easily preserved following burial, which may go some way towards explaining why so many creationists think that if evolution were true, we should be drowning in transitional fossils. As it happens, Booby, it turns out that you're wrong on that too. For example, here's what's left of an infant that Falchion 49 almost missed by mistaking it for a post hole, and these remains are just 1600 years old and considered to be in fairly good condition. Surely someone with an imagination as active as yours can figure out what generally happens after 160,000 years. Anyway, that just about wraps this up with regard to shoveling your shite back up your rectum except for having a couple more laughs at your expense by taking a quick look at how you finished off your craptastic little production. So let's take a quick look so I can let you go, booby, because I'm sure that you're itching to get down to the drive through there is no evidence of millions of years of evolution. Yet, the observed evidence fits well within the biblical history of Earth. Yeah, right. I think it should be quite clear to anyone with even the most tenuous of grasps on reality that the brazen record of baseless assertion and generally quite astonishing fucktardedness I've exposed here should give anyone pause for thought before believing you on this subject and even make them think twice if you were to claim that the sky was blue. Now, there is one grave that's empty. The body is still gone. The grave of Jesus Christ. And there it is, the partially digested cherry atop this particularly rancid chocolate sundae. I find it sickeningly fascinating, booby, that buffoons like you are perfectly content to accept and assert your primitive beliefs in the absence of any evidence at all, and yet smugly and anti-socially deny patently obvious reality by ignoring mountains of evidence as if it doesn't exist. In fact, if I were to display the same level of ignorance and disregard for science and reason as you've done here, I could quite seriously conclude after watching your video that all creationists are stupendously asinine 400 pound lard buckets who take a 55 triple D cup size. Of course, unlike yours, my assertion wouldn't be completely inaccurate, would it?